Hey guys, this is Chris Jones, and this is episode 18 of Ask Me Anything. So welcome to the second story of the KBJ Capital Loft. This is where I spend a lot of my time when I'm not some of the previous videos, you got to see the, the downstairs location where I do you know, company meetings, meetings with my portfolio companies, um, you know, uh, among other things. And so up here is where kind of a, a lot of the, the work gets done. You know, I sit here at the computer and do conference calls and I you know, kind of do my, do my thing. So today's uh, topic is going to be about a 10 minute video on SEO basics. I re a lot of the meetings I've been having recently with prospective local businesses, particularly here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. So when, um, you know, a friend, you know, whether it be, you know, my kids, uh, you know, one of, the, one of his buddy's parents who's a local business owner, and that's happened a number of times where they'll say, hey, Chris, you know, you're a digital marketing and SEO guy. Let's sit down. I've, I've had to go through this sort of five to 10 minute SEO basics overview with them because I want them to understand that, you know, if you're a local business owner, a couple things. SEO is an absolute essential uh, channel that you need to be building your business. You can't take it for granted. It always starts with whether or not you have, you know, a website uh, and whether or not that website is presenting your brand and your business in a way that, that you'd want it presented. Um, but then you get into some more of the sort of uh, optimization sides of, of marketing which is search engine optimization or, or SEO. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna walk you through some of the basics and I hope that you find value in that. You know, we certainly in future episodes could go really deep here. Uh, that's not the purpose of this video. So if you're one of my buddies in a, who's an advanced SEO or you know SEO like the back of your hand, well, great. You could like the video, heart it, you know, then hard it again and then, and then come back to the next video. But for those of you that are out there saying, you know, I'd like some, some high level on SEO, this is for you. So there's really two main things that I, I want you to appreciate about optimizing your, your, your website. Uh, a little bit, it sounds technical, but it's really not. I'll help you better understand it. It's basically on-site optimization, meaning taking action to optimize your, your, your web presence in and of itself, and then what's called off-site optimization. In terms of you know, the on-site, as I said, it's just setting your website up for success. Here's a couple of the things that we do as professional SEOs that uh, you'll need to do or you should do for your business. Number one is you want to pay attention to your website architecture. You've got to make sure that Google could find your website and then index the website, index the pages. Keep this in mind. Google doesn't index websites. It index, indexes web pages. So each page of your website needs to be equally optimized. So one question I would ask you right now, and Google actually provides a website that allows you to type in the domain of your website and it will tell you if you're mobile optimized or not. <clears throat> if you're not mobile optimized, you really need to make the investment in a mobile optimized website. The trend is clearly towards mobile uh, and if you want people to continue to find you, don't take for granted that just because you have a website, people could find you on mobile. You've got to be mobile optimized, so check that out. But ultimately, when we're talking about on-site SEO, we need to think about keywords and content. I'll get to the content in a second. The keywords are ultimately the descriptors of your business or service, right? You've probably, you know, uh, when you were building the website, probably gave your designer, you know, information about your products or your services and they put it on there. But remember, since Google indexes web pages, not websites, you wanna make sure that each page of the website is focused on one or two or three keywords that you want that, that website, or I'm sorry, that web page to rank for in Google. I should have probably said this from the start, but when I talk about SEO, what I'm talking about is your website, a 
appearing in the what's called the organic search results on Google, Bing, and other search engines when people type in keywords related to your product or service. It, this, is, uh, this is a critical element of your business. You know, in the old days, they would use the yellow pages to find you. Um, don't want to go there. You don't want me to go there. But let's just say people don't use the, the yellow pages. You already know that. I don't have to convince you. They use search engines, um, among other things. But we're talking about search engines today. So keywords are what trigger your website coming up in the results. So you want to do comprehensive keyword research. As, an, as a professional SEO, this is an area that we, we take very, very serious. We spend a lot of time doing competitor research. We, do a, we spend a lot of time understanding your business so that we could create a keyword document that ultimately we could use to not only optimize the existing con content on the site, but work with you to produce content so you rank for a lot more keywords. Uh, some other things, uh, you've probably heard of meta descriptions. Most important meta description, there's really three of them. Uh, there's really one or two that matter. The three are title, uh, title tags, uh, meta descriptions, and meta keywords. The most important is the meta title tag. This is the information that you give to Google within your HTML to describe what your page is about. It's, incri it's critically important. Whatever target keyword or keywords you used within the content of that page really need to be in the title tag. Very important. Another thing is really kind of a basic concept is that you know Google still has difficulty reading images. So if on your website you have an image and it, and it has content in it, which is critical to describing the page, Google is unlikely to be able to read it. So you need to optimize your images. There's something called alt image tags that are within the HTML that you could use to describe the image. Again, this is very basic stuff, but ask yourself, you know, hey, are you, have you paid attention to your website architecture? You know, have, are, are you mobile optimized? Uh, was the website created and has it been updated over time with the types of keywords that, that you want to rank for? Are your meta descriptions, I'm sorry, your, yeah, your, your meta tags and particularly your meta title tag, is, is it optimized at the page level across your website? Are each of the images on your website optimized using an alt image tag to describe the image? These are questions you should ask yourself. And then finally, when, we, when we're talking about on-site optimization, uh, this is so critical. We talk about content marketing, right? So I could promise you that the old days of SEO where you could have a thin website, meaning 3, 4, 5, 10, 15 pages, and rank for a lot of keywords is just behind us. You need to have a, an ongoing uh, content marketing strategy. A lot of small businesses find that just adding a blog to their website allows them to produce content over a period of time. Generally speaking, uh, I don't care what industry you're in, you should be producing no less than two to three pieces of unique content a week. The jury's still out, but that content should be medium to long form and it should be on site, meaning published on your site. Um, in terms of the, 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 the amount of words, on the low end, it should be say 350, on the high end, you know, 800. Um, at the end of the day, what you should be trying to do with your on site content is becoming the local de facto resource for whatever it is that you sell or whatever it is that you um, promote. So if you sell gardening supplies, creating you know, how-to videos and how-to guides and walking people through the trials and tribulations of planting too early or planting too late or what's the difference between an annual and a perennial, you get the idea. And you could apply that same idea of becoming the de facto authority within your market. By the way, it's not easy, it's heavy lifting, and if you're gonna pay someone else to do it, it's not gonna be cheap. But if you want to be competitive from an SEO standpoint, you want to rank higher and for more keywords on Google and other search engines, on-site con content strategy is, is very, very important. The second thing I mentioned was off-site optimization. Uh, 
the end goal here is to build domain authority. Domain referring to your website URL. Basically, let's just say your gardeningusa.com. When Google was founded in the late 90s, it actually was founded based on the doctoral dissertations of the founders of Google, Larry Page and Sergey Brin. For those of you that are listening that have, that have ever written an academic paper, you know that when we write an academic paper, we cite our sources within the paper, and then at the end, we have something called a work cited. Well, Larry and Sergey came up with this idea that, wow, we could build a better search engine that then existed at the time by analyzing and computing the number of citations, aka links, coming from other websites, both the number and the quality of the links coming from one website back into a primary source. That primary source is your website. So the quantity and the quality of links coming back in um, are prime indicators to Google of your overall domain authority or your authoritativeness. I know this sounds totally nerdy and I've probably lost you, but just hear me out. It's important from an offsite optimization standpoint that you, um, you know, think about this and you take active steps to build more links into your website. Generally speaking, the more links that you, that you have coming in and the higher quality, the more likely it is that you're going to rank above your competitors um, on Google. So therefore, you should care about this. And by the way, there's a ton of free content out there. Oh, I didn't even show you my book. I was supposed to start this video by saying I actually wrote a book on this. Um, it's in its third edition. I've sold over 100,000 copies of this. I'm not trying to sell my book. Plus, it's kind of outdated because the last one that I published was in 2013, which is basically dinosauric compared to some of the changes that have happened. But I wanted to show you that I, that, that I wrote a book. Um, there is a chapter in here on link building. There's a lot of free content out there. Other books that have been written on SEO have covered it. It's very, very important. Uh, you know, don't just learn it, do it. And then off-site content marketing. So I said, we chatted just a couple minutes ago about this idea of publishing content on your site. But one of the most effective ways of building your domain authority um, and building links back to your site is by, by becoming an author. Um, and publishing content on other people's websites, other people's blogs, trade journals, major publications, whatever it might be. I get that some of you may say, well, I'm not a good writer. Um, I don't know anybody at those publications. Uh, so neither did I before uh, I started doing it. And now I've been personally published almost 270 times across a bunch of publications. So it's something... And why do I do it? I don't just do it to see my name in a byline, which by the way is where you earn your link back to your site. But I do it, so I definitely do it for SEO purposes. Um, and you also get the PR side of it, the public relations side of it, because you're put, putting yourself out there as an expert. So uh, it's offsite content marketing. Um, we have some content on the lseo.com website uh, about how to do this. Uh, Ron Liebeck, who's our head of content, writes a lot on this topic. So if you go to the LSEO blog, you could learn more about this idea of becoming an author and publishing content on third-party websites. Now, anyway, that's the kind of SEO 101, on-site optimization, off-site optimization. Hope that was useful to you. The final thing is you have to learn how to attribute the traffic that comes into your website. You do that through installing analytics. I'm not going to get into the differences between Omniture and Google Analytics and Kissmetrics and others. Install, make sure you have Google Analytics installed on your website. It's free. There's a ton of tutorials out there on how it works so that you can make sure that you understand the attribution flow of where the traffic's coming, where it's dropping off, how much time people are spending on your website. These are all SEO factors that you know, you're going to want to want to learn more about. So install analytics. I hope those of you that are still listening found this useful. It was meant to be an overview. Uh, I hope you found it educational. If you have some more specific questions about SEO, digital marketing, or anything else, 
please go ahead and, and post in the comment section. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in episode 19. How long? 15 for that one. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>